Welcome to the Tesla Power Podcast. This is where we're building the Tesla Energy community, covering solar panels, solar roof, and power wall for your home. I'm Aaron Brady, and today, let's talk about the solar roof and home values. Let's talk about recommended number of batteries for your home. Let's talk about energy independence, battery availability, and a ton more. Let's do it. So as per usual, we'll kick off the pond with community input. You can participate in tons of ways. Leave a comment below, link your YouTube videos. You can call 203-816-5150, or you can email teslapowerpodcast at gmail.com. And for the bold and ambitious, you can record an unlisted video in the YouTube app. Send that link, and I'll put your video question in the show. First up, Mario leaves a comment on episode 42. He says, quote, great video yet again. Two opinions I had. First, when it came to increasing property value, just like adding a new kitchen to your house, it's probably not worth adding solar to increase value. Do it for your enjoyment and, in the case of solar, to eventually get very cheap electricity after your system's paid off. And the battery provides peace of mind. Don't add solar if you plan to move before you can recover your investment. If you do this, any increase in house value, get over the new free system that paid for uh, paid itself off is gravy. Second, from the Tesla perspective, they're growing the battery business both for their automotive business as well as utility home storage. So the flat growth numbers are probably not as significant considering they've grown significantly on the automotive side. Different from a company that's just building batteries for energy storage. Thanks for the great videos and information. I ordered solar in Northern Virginia end of January 2022 and I have my install schedule for April 18th. 14.4 kilowatt system with one power wall. And I'm seriously thinking about asking if I can add a second and quote, and I watched love it or list it, which makes me an expert, right? <laughs> and I can tell you that adding a kitchen definitely adds the value of your home. I accept that's not the point you're making, right? You're not putting in a kitchen to sell your home. You're putting in a kitchen. So you will love your home. So I agree that it's, you know, enough reason to put in solar. You get to love your home and realize the benefit for yourself. However, it would be better to have access to the value if you needed it. Uh, if you put in a Tesla solar roof, um, but it didn't add value to your home, you wouldn't be able to access the value in the form of like a home equity line of credit in the same way you can do with a kitchen. A kitchen will add at least incremental value to your home and it will probably add even more value than the cash that you put in. At the moment, the Tesla solar roof, I can't find anybody anyway, um, either on the real estate agent side or on the um, um, appraisal side that will add value to your home based on uh, your Tesla solar roof, even just the installation cost, let alone any appreciation beyond that. So, you know, what are you going to do in the event where you need to access that cash that you've put into your home for an investment or, you know, anything you want, maybe education, maybe anything else. But you know, it, if you do get some value out of the solar roof or your solar panels, it increases your options and your overall spending power should you need to exercise it. Um, and I think it's a bit of a shame, right, that you don't see that value immediately. And, you know, we'll see if it changes over time. Um, as far as your solar order, though, I encourage you to go for that second battery. Two reasons. Number one, battery, you know, one battery just isn't enough storage to get through a 24-hour period for most homes. Uh, and number two, one battery isn't enough instantaneous power output for a whole home backup, especially if you have central air. You'll need two batteries to cover your peak power requirement to get you through even a, a short interruption in power. Otherwise, you'll be tripping the power wall and losing power anyway until you can get your AC turned off. And I don't know, what if you're not home when it happens? So get two batteries, at least in my opinion. Um, get more if you can. <laughs> I have a system with a 13 and a half kilowatt system and two batteries is not enough. So take that for what it's worth, but congratulations on getting your install date. Keep us posted on your project. We want to enjoy your uh, process vicariously through you. Next up, Kevin Giusulo made me laugh. He said, uh, he said this on the last video. He says, quote, good luck. If you get him on the phone, tell him you're monitoring and recording for quality assurance purposes, end quote. I love that. I can't get him on the phone though. I've emailed the utility company a couple of times, uh, along with Tesla. Um, but the utilities replied a couple of times. I haven't heard anything from Tesla yet. They need to update my drawings and nameplate values on those drawings. Um, and what I might do anyway is just sign the agreement as it is. 
and uh, maybe we'll be able to get those things changed later. I just don't want to be the one that's holding the whole process up. But the saga continues. Kevin, you did let us know or let me know that you got PTO, which is awesome. Congratulations. So you've been an inspiration. Really appreciate the way that you've gone through the process and the pointers you've given to the rest of us. I would encourage anybody going through the process, do what Kevin did. Make sure you're writing. Uh, you're putting everything in writing, copying in the utility and copying in Tesla so that everybody can be on the same page. Just makes sense, right? All right. Uh, Dwight Adams is back. He had commented, quote, um, here we go. I understand the motivation of people that want clean energy. However, my motivation is I want energy independence from the utility. It's been said that the greatest product service provided to people in the 20th century was electric service in the home because it resulted in decreasing poverty around the world and quote, and this is very close to my heart. And I've pointed this out in several um, uh, episodes previously that the ability of a single person to um, be able to use a great amount of power cheaply is directly associated with their wealth. And this is for humanity across the board. And if you're able to generate your own energy and use your own energy uh, at a reasonable price, independent of your government, then you aren't dependent on your government to provide those things for you. Um, certainly, if we can move into a world where we've uh, got the ability for individuals to produce their own energy and use their own energy very inexpensively, then we're, we're heading toward a future where you know a great deal of humanity can be very wealthy. Uh, I would love it, though, Dwight, if you could find who that quote is attributed to so we can share it with the community. I mean, I think it's a beautiful quote, and I think there's you know tons of truth in there. So thanks for sharing. All right, next up, we've got uh, Kelly uh, Taylor. Uh, he writes in response to our discussion in episode 32 that the transformer had to be upgraded to support the new Tesla solar installation. Let's read it. Quote, if the transformer is rated for two houses at least two of 200 amp main breakers, it should be fine to export the same amount. So I call BS on the utility, end quote. Now, I want to make sure I'm following the math here. So let's pull up the calculator. Um, I want to make sure I'm typing into that calculator, of course. Uh, let's zero it out. So um, we have 200 amps at each of the two locations. Um, and then each house is 110 volt service. Do I multiply 110? Okay, so 200 amps, sorry, two homes at 110 volt service. Uh, then that transformer that serves those two houses would have a minimum capacity of 44,000 watts, right? That's 44 kilowatts. Um, so that would mean either both systems, if it wasn't, if it wasn't enough uh, capacity in that transformer, it would have to mean that both of those um, solar systems were very large or one house would have to be putting out more than 44 kilowatts at a time, which would be an insanely huge Tesla, uh, well, Tesla or otherwise solar system. Um, I suppose it's also possible that a transformer serves more than just two households. But I don't happen to know. I mean, I have a 13 kilowatt system. So the continuous output, if it were to be me, my neighbor, and one other, I mean, we're still at, you know, 13 and a half times three. You know, we're still at 40 kilowatts. We would still be under that 44 kilowatt, you know, threshold. I would assume that they're going to be rated at something very even. So probably at 50 kilowatts. Um, so I can understand why you think that we should be calling BS on the utility, but I don't see how Tesla would be eager to pay to replace a transformer if it weren't really required. So I don't know. I'd love to get an expert on the podcast that could talk to these sorts of technical details with some authority. So let me know if any of you would be interested in lending your expertise. It'd be super valuable to all of us, I think. All right, next up, we've got Stefan. Stefan, uh, he, uh, he's got a Powerwall order that seems to be a bust. Let's read it. I canceled my Powerwall order. They can't deliver, end quote. And that sucks. I have a couple of questions, though. Did you order with Tesla solar panels or a solar roof? Or did you just try to order the batteries on their own? And then second, where are you located? Now, I love to guess. I would say 
you didn't order with any Tesla solar panels or solar roof. And I would say you're probably somewhere like Australia <laughs> where these things are really highly in demand. Um, we do already know that batteries are constrained. So if you're ordering batteries on their own without solar, um, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they can't deliver for a year, maybe even longer, right? And it's worse in some markets, of course, because they're buying batteries that are uh, made in you know, the US or in China. Uh, I'd expect markets outside of the US and China um, to have worse availability. So if you're in some battery forsaken continent, maybe Australia, because of high demand and no local production, I can absolutely see you getting discouraged enough uh, with really long lead times to cancel your order. But let me know how close my guesses are or what a dummy I am. Fun either way. Next, we've got a uh, question from uh, email. Let me bring that up. Uh, Chidu asked for a bit of advice on his uh, proposed solar system. Let's read what he's got to say. Quote, happened to see your podcast today. I appreciate if you can read through my email and give me your review comments. Um, my house is in Jacksonville, Florida. See the Google picture below. I'm signing up for 10 kilowatt Tesla 420 watt panels with two batteries, one Powerwall Plus and one regular Powerwall. And my average yearly consumption is about 7,500 kilowatt hours. And my daily average for the past 18 months was 18 kilowatt hours. Question, will that panel capacity suffice? And two, do you suggest I go with three power walls? Appreciate your response and quote. And my favorite resource on this kind of calculation is the peak sun hours map from Unbound Solar. So let's pull that up really quickly. Um, I have it right here, bringing it up full screen. Um, it's going to give you a good daily average production for your locale, just based on the amount of sun we're expecting you to see over the course of a year. And you can see here, the entire state of Florida falls into the four and a half peak sun hour region. Uh, so let's see what that means you can expect for production uh, from a 10 kilowatt system. Uh, so we are going to zero this out and as long as all the panels fit on the south side of your roof, you're going to get much, you're probably going to get a much bigger system than you need. So let's do the math. So it's 10 kilowatts at uh, four and a half hours per day. So you're going to, on average, generate about 45 kilowatt hours of energy every day. And by this metric, you can expect to generate 16,425 kilowatt hours. I mean, right? Times 365 days. 16,425 kilowatt hours in a year. Um, you know, almost double what you need. You were saying something like 7,000 kilowatt hours. So if you're making 16, I mean, yeah, more than double. But even if we consider you might increase your usage with an electric car or two, um, every day that would add about 10 kilowatt, yeah, 10 kilowatt hours of usage per car per day. So if you're at um, 18 usage now, we'll add... 10 and 10 so it's 38 kilowatt hours per day um i don't know you might be able to save some money with the smaller system you know or you can make some money if you can get yourself enrolled in a net metering plan or me maybe even um you know an export tariff plan the problem with the export tariff plans is they're only going to give you um um wholesale for your energy they're not going to give you retail or uh, a premium uh, which you would get from a demand response program. So if you can, you know, maybe get enroll, enrolled in a demand response program, then getting the extra capacity would be worth it to you. But I'm not sure that you have access to one in Jacksonville. Uh, so you should check with your utility. And we've been hearing a lot lately about how Florida is just trying to end net metering, let alone, you know, offering demand response payments. So, um, check that out before you make that kind of investment or commitment. But because you're only using 18 kilowatt hours of the capacity um, that you might be generating that 45 kilowatt hours a day, more battery isn't really going to be that much, that much value unless you have a demand response program you can participate in. If you're using less of your battery capacity over time, you know, I guess you can expect your batteries to last longer. So you might see some value there, but I mean, at the moment, Battery storage is just too expensive to warrant that kind of additional outlay, in my opinion anyway. So the concise answers to your question are, yes, 10 kilowatts will suffice, uh, but it's probably more than you need now. And 
unless your usage is going to go way up or you can participate in a demand response program, I don't recommend three power walls for you. Two will do for now. And thanks to Mario, Kevin, Dwight, Kelly, Stefan, Chidu, all of you for your input. Let's hear from the rest of you too. Send in your YouTube links, comment below, call 203-816-5150 or email teslapowerpodcast at gmail.com. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get into the news. So this week we have like five stories to cover, lots of news to cover. So first up, we've got something from the Rob Report. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Rob Report, but it is uh, super swank, as you can tell by the ads that they're putting on their website. They show us some Tesla solar roof luxury. Quote, The property also features one of the first Tesla solar roofs in Santa Barbara County. Tesla solar roofs don't comp uh, compromise on aesthetics and are much more discreet than typical solar panels, which makes them particularly sought after for homes of this caliber. They're made with a glass, solar tile, glass roofing tiles, and architectural grade steel tiles, and are supposedly more efficient than other solar panel methods. And quote, there's a couple of uh, factual inaccuracies there actually, because they only offer um, those metal tiles, I believe are aluminum tiles, they're not steel. And, um, you know, the, the glass roofing tiles, um, you know, aren't really more efficient than other solar methods. You know, these glass, um, um, active solar tiles, you know, they do offer decent, um, um, uh, what do you call it? efficiency and you can put it on more of your roof, uh, because you can divide them into smaller, uh, sections so they can fit into more irregular shapes on your roof. But you know, strictly speaking, they're not more efficient, but, uh, this story I wanted to share with you because it's these luxury, um, types of properties that are one of the reasons that the Tesla solar roof won't have any demand issues, no matter what the price is for many years, you know, the demand or, you know, the amount of demand from these kinds of high luxury properties in the United States alone We'll keep the product manufacturing and installation teams busy for many years. And in light of the shortage on solar components and battery cells, I don't see this changing in the short term. So let's go back to the article and just take a look at some of these photos here. We've got glamour shots, actually more of them toward the end. Right here, you can barely see a peak of that solar roof, but it doesn't jump out at all. It it looks like it's meant to be in this, this place. You can see the uh, the roof a little bit better there more of the roof here again like super subtle definitely fits into the aesthetic definitely gives it a very luxe look uh, for any property looking to up its environmental cred this is going to be a must-have and you know for these projects money is no object and it definitely appeals to hollywood's need to virtual signal so i'm very interested to see you know the tesla energy numbers for q1 i want to see if they're making any better progress with the tesla solar roof you know, I would hope by now we'll start seeing the result of price increases, better installation times, all that kind of stuff reflected in the financials. But of course, we'll see. Next up, we've got an article from PV Magazine. They report on Tesla slip in solar installation rankings. Let's read this quote. Together, Sunrun, Titan Solar Power and Freedom Forever command over 20 percent of the U.S. solar residential market. And the competition among the rest is intensifying. In October of 2021, SunPower acquired residential solar provider Blue Raven Solar, a move intended to help SunPower expand in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic regions. And with this acquisition, SunPower now holds 2.7% of the market. Momentum has 2.2%. Uh, and in the number six spot, Trinity Solar is number seven with 2% share. And the article goes on... Um, to say that together all of these uh, things are, you know, uh, showing more of a fractured market, you know. Um, the whole point of this, though, isn't really to, um, to just talk about, you know, market share. It's really to point out that this isn't a customer service or customer satisfaction uh, survey. So just because it's falling in rankings 
um, you know, as far as market share goes, doesn't mean that there's not a good story to be seen here. So if we go back to the article, they have a chart that shows, you know, more of the interesting story. So let's, let's uh, head back over there. You can see that uh, the market itself is fragmenting. Here we only have a few players. And as the chart goes through 2018, 19, 20, and 21, we already see a lot more uh, solar providers in the chart. Now, with that, you have more installation options. Um, you know, they have way more than they will even show in this graph. It only goes up to 40% market share at its peak here, right? You can also see that Tesla market share, which is right here, is slower decreasing over time, but has stabilized over the last couple of years. The biggest thing to notice, though, is that everyone's market share, every single person or every single organization's market share is decreasing as the market for solar in the United States is maturing and more entrants chip away at share from market leaders. Like even Sunrun, who, you know, after Tesla Solar uh, reduced its offerings between 2017 and 2018, it has been shrinking market share every year, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. What is super important to point out about this though, is that those are percentage mar numbers in a market that's really growing enormously. So just because market share is stable or even declining, it doesn't mean that the business of that installer in particular is shrinking. It simply means it's not growing as quickly as maybe another um, um, installer. In fact, it's not growing as fast as the market is growing. But um, I would be super interested to know what percentage of these installations include battery storage. Um, I think that's a must for a stable grid. And it'd be super interesting to know what solar panels are being used for these installations. With the closing of LG solar business, I would expect these to be dominated by Chinese manufacturers, maybe some Canadian manufacturers. But we'll keep an eye on this, see if Tesla is going to um, grow some market share over the next couple of years with its solar panel lease options, uh, its price match guarantee and its unique solar roof offering. Next up, we've got an article uh, from Electrek. They report on bad news for Tesla solar roof installations in progress. Quote, in December, we released a report on how Tesla was starting to delay some solar rooftop projects. That would include solar panels, uh, just to note. At the time, Tesla solar roof installations weren't affected by those same issues, but things changed in February when Tesla started to have concerns about solar tile supply. At the time, Tesla informed customers who were about to get installations about potential delays, and now a month later, the situation has worsened and Tesla has virtually paused solar roof installations. Um, Electrek obtained an internal communication from Tesla's solar scheduling team saying to focus on solar panel rooftop retrofits as solar tile supply is low. In the communication, the team co uh, committed to not schedule new installations, end quote. And you might remember that for me last year, Tesla wanted to schedule my roof tear off in November of 2020 with an installation schedule for March of 2021. I turned them down. Uh, the scheduler had implied that I might be able to get an install more quickly if the roof tear off and subsequent dry in uh, were done early. Uh, but they made it clear that I may be without a roof for several months. <sighs> Ahead of winter in the Northeast, that just seemed unwise. Um, now, having gone through the process now and seeing the dry-in underlayment, and even during our installation, we got stuck without a roof during thunderstorms and heavy rain several days during our install. I can vouch for its durability. Still, I wouldn't want to go for months without a roof. So if you're affected by this, um, this pause in solar roof installations, hit me up so you can share your story in the community here. Uh, it'd be helpful to understand the circumstances around the timing. See if there are things that uh, people can do to avoid the pain uh, when it comes time for their installation in particular. Um, so let us know, hit us up. All right, next up. Anyone remember Bob Vila? He's got some solar rankings for 2022. Who even knew? Let's read them. So quote, learn what to look for when selecting a solar company and why the following solar companies earned a spot on this lineup. So number one, best overall was SunPower. The runner up was SunPro Solar. Best bang for the buck was Tesla. Best customer service was Momentum Solar. And for some reason, they also want you to consider Palmetto. 
Uh, I'm sure that has some sponsored link or something. <laughs> but uh, you might also remember that Tim the Toolman Taylor couldn't stand Bob Vila for being a poser and a brown noser. I was going to get to that. <laughs> Which is a total, total cheap shot. Now, for Solar Newbies, this is a good review article. Um, they've got direct links to the solar providers for additional detail. And Tesla makes the cut largely because they do the price match guarantee. Um, anyway, I've got a link to the article, as always, in the show notes. Go check it out. I think, uh, especially if you're new to solar, it's got some, some, helpful, um, some helpful points. All right. Last up, finally, we've got Wired reporting on the invocation of the Defense Production Act Let's take it full screen to read it. Quote, on Thursday, the Biden administration said it would invoke the Defense Production Act in a bid to ensure that lithium supply comes from the U.S., along with other important battery minerals like graphite, nickel, cobalt, and manganese. The administration says dependence on foreign sources for these resources is a national security concern. End quote. And this is going to be pretty important for Tesla and its suppliers, Panasonic, CATL, LG, if they have any hopes of making serious progress in ramping up cell production, uh, cell production in the United States. New mining capacity will be held up for years with environmental approvals, litigation, um, you know, just red tape in general without this move to invoke the uh, Defense Production Act. Um, I would say that this move is decidedly anti-environmental. In fact, I'd be interested in reactions from viewers of this channel to see if it's even something they support. From my perspective, the environment's important, but it's also important to look at the bigger picture and, and to work toward the greater good with the long term in mind. Uh, so I would expect most to be in favor of short term environmental sacrifices in service of long term environmental wins, regardless of nas national security concerns. But I want to hear from you. I want to make sure I'm not missing something. Uh, you know, maybe there's something really important that I'm not considering here. Um, like, do we think that the industry will move in an irresponsible way when given cover from the Defense Production Act? Uh, you know, do we even know what the positive and negatives are going to be? So let me hear from you. Uh, you guys are very well educated. You guys can really give me an idea of where to start trying to grok this whole thing and, and, and understand what the, uh, the pros and cons can be, but that will do it for the news. Let's take another quick break. When we come back, we'll get into the featured video. So the limiting factor got a great call out from Elon during the Giga, the Giga Berlin address that I wanted to share. Um, Jordan Giesegi made a video on the coming battery materials crunch, and I think it complements the invocation of the Defense Production Act really well. Um, you'll hear that both he and Elon note that it will be the limiting factor <laughs> through 2025. So let's take a look. Elon made some comments at Giga Berlin that related closely to what's covered in this video, and it pretty much aligns with what I'm saying based on what I've seen in the news. Let's listen to what Elon said, I'll give a few thoughts, and then we'll move on to the main video itself. You know, last year there were a lot of supply chain challenges with chips, everyone knows about the chip shortage, and then... Uh, this year, there's still some chip shortages, and then uh, next year uh, will be, I think, probably a, a, a challenge with, with uh, total battery production. Um, and then so certainly if you start going like two, three years out, it's all, it's all about total, how many gigawatt hours of battery are, are produced. That will be the limiting factor. And then going even further down into the supply chain, what is the rate at which uh, battery materials are being mined and refined? And obviously we want to do that in an ethical and environmentally sensitive way. Um, so that, that in the long grand scheme of things is, is uh, how many terawatt hours of battery can be produced per year. Now, as usual, what Elon said could be parsed a few different ways. Uh, when he speaks off the cuff, he can't speak 100% precisely, and you just, it's open to a little bit of interpretation, but this was fairly clear. So the first thing is, he said 2022 is going to be all about the chips. 
and we've discussed that in past videos. But next year, it's going to return to total battery production as the limiting factor. In 2024 to 2025, he said it's all about gigawatt hours produced. Now, what's the difference between total gigawatt hours produced in 2024 to 2025 and what he was saying about total battery production next year? I think the differentiating factor there is raw materials. And I think that's why Elon, at the end of what he said there, tacked on a few words about the importance of mining and refining in a responsible way. And I like that Tesla are paying lip service to mining in a responsible way. We'll need to see if they can deliver on that. As he often notes, you know, production's hard and it's probably hard enough without having to also think about in being environmentally responsible. But if the Defense Production Act is going to move barriers aside and if Tesla is going to mine responsibly, uh, I don't know, I'm really hopeful that we can transition to a clean energy economy quickly and relatively smoothly. Um, you know, we haven't yet seen the Tesla energy business growing at the rate Tesla automotive business has been growing at, but we do expect it to. And these bottlenecks will have to be overcome in order to make that a reality. Now let's check out some, uh, uh, production numbers. Um, we've been producing more and more every day, obviously as days are getting longer and as, um, um, you know, we're getting sunnier days, the, um, uh, angle on the roof is also improving, so that improves our numbers. Uh, the higher the sun gets in the sky, the more the um, pan, uh, the solar tiles on the north side of our house are going to um, um, produce. So let's take a look at our energy production today. I mean, we're at almost 60 kilowatt hours, which is pretty great. Um, yesterday, though, you know, wasn't amazing, you know, but you know, today was quite good. Let's take a look at my brother-in-law's system he's got um really really good production going you can see he generated today almost 70 kilowatt hours which is just i mean totally incredible i know he'll probably i think if i remember correctly last year he peaked out at 80 kilowatt hours which we did as well um it's just a tremendous amount of electricity to be to be generating in a single day. Um, we did get our new electricity bill, so let's take a look at that. Um, the new bill was was pretty low. Um, you can see here, if we take it full screen, that that um, bill was only $95.22. Let's check out last year's. It was a whopping $411.18. So, like seriously gotta love that, right? Uh, now I have a full year of uh, data so I can compare um, what our total production was estimated to be with what we actually produced over that 12 months. Um, we'll be pulling together the 12 month numbers so that we can do a full one year review. Uh, maybe that'll be for the next episode. Um, I haven't yet gone gotten the drawings and the stats updated on my application with UI, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, I do think that I'm going to go ahead and sign it and return it and just point out that I know that those things need to change. Again, I don't want to be the bottleneck to the whole process. Um, I'll keep you updated uh, when I get the updated drawings from Tesla and when I get um, my witness test booked with the utility. And that'll do it for episode 53 of the Tesla Power Podcast. Please Use my referral code. You can save $500 on a solar roof and $300 on solar panels. You can go to ts.la slash 62310 to place your order. And I'm Aaron Brady, your residential community organizer. Um, let's do this again on the next video.